five feminine habits that men find wildly attractive. In this video, we're going to be talking about what are those habits and how to cultivate your feminine magnetism to draw him to you, make him fall in love, desire you, want to commit to you for life without rejection, him losing interest or pulling away. So let's start diving right into it. So habit number five is letting him initiate. Now this may seem obvious, but here's the thing. He can't initiate if you're the one initiating. Um, at any moment, only one person can be chasing and one person can be taking that lead in the relationship. So if you're the one who's always initiating, always texting him first, calling him, uh, inviting him to things, initiating physical contact or sex, investing more into the relationship, then he won't be able, physically won't be able to do those things. And nor will he have an incentive to do those things. So you have to embrace the openness, the feminine energy is a lot of a lot of it is about openness. It's about like the ocean, the movement, allowing that to come to you, receiving it um, and receiving him being able to invest into you and being able to take that action to lead the relationship and to be your knight in shining armor um, rather than you being the knight in shining armor and doing everything and trying to make the uh, move the relationship forward. You have to allow that to come to you and to receive it, which is actually a skill set that needs to be cultivated. So not necessarily easy, simple, but not necessarily easy. Habit number four is going with the flow. So this means not trying to be so rigid in your planning and the action, which is all masculine techniques, trying to get things to happen, planning it out, being strategic, but allowing, especially in your relationship, more space for things to emerge. And that goes along with letting him initiate. So letting him come up with spontaneous ideas for you both or a date night. Um, and rather than getting upset about it or like, oh, I thought we were going here. Why are we going here now? I was already planned out for this. It'd be like, oh, okay, take a breath. He has a plan. Let it unfold and be part of the adventure, part of the journey with it. Of course, you may need to set boundaries. You know, if he's trying to um, move things in directions that you don't want to go in, you need to speak up, but be open to the possibilities of adventure and of new experiences that he may want to take you on that you may not even have been able to create on your own or think of on your own. Feminine habit number three is to cultivate the nurturing energy. Now, this is one of the essences of femininity, of course, is being a mother. It's taking care of children, uh, relationships, family dynamics. Now, with your relationship, of course, you do not want to mother him, but you can take this nurturing approach in the sense of being there for him, listening to him, wanting to hear his concerns, his thoughts, his feelings, not getting afraid. You know, just like a mother with a child, if a child starts uh, talking about how it's upset and it wants to, you know, wants to run away or wants to go spend time with itself. The mother's not getting upset and saying like, no, you can't leave me or you can't do that. Or how can you think that way? It's just listening to the child. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Because here's the thing. Every man has within him a little child, a little boy that is often scared, often doesn't know what to do next, often wants to be um, held and to be there for that part of him when it comes out, when he's not always so strong to be there and to listen and to give him a hug and to let him rest his head on your chest. Um, and to, to, to help him feel that energy from you can be very seductive and it can be one of those things that makes him feel like this is the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. This is someone I feel safe with and my heart feels safe with, which can be very powerful. Habit number two is feminine dress and body language. And of course, Physical appearance can be very powerful with this as well, which means making sure you're dressing in your most feminine, um, magnetic way, um, wearing things that make you feel feminine, that make you feel sexy, you know, dresses, um, things that are the opposite of how a masculine person would dress, uh, a masculine man would dress. You want to dress like the opposite of that. So you're also creating contrast and polarity in the relationship, which is really the only thing that generates attraction, chemistry, passion long term is that masculine feminine polarity dynamic which creates that juice so you can embrace that with your dress your style how you fix your hair oftentimes things like longer hair uh, feminine flow um, things that are maybe more reds more pinks uh, jewelry and taking care of your makeup just so you feel really good as well that you're feeling sexy and feminine that's going to be one of the keys because it's also going to boost your confidence going to make you feel more attractive make you feel um like that magnetic person, which is going to draw him to you as well. And of course, with your body language would be a big key with this as well, which would be 
uh, feminine body language, grace, flow, um, you know, sway, moving. Feminine energy is a lot about movement. It's a lot about flow. It's not about just rigid, stiff structure. That's like the masculine. The masculine is, is like the rock in the ocean. It's solid. It's straight. It's, it's, it's not moving. It's consciousness. The feminine is the ocean around it flowing and moving and like the tides. So that is what you want to embrace with your body language as well and how you move and how you talk and how you interact with, with, with him and men that you're interested in. Now, final habit here, feminine habit number one is appreciation. Now, this is key because appreciation happens when you are receiving. It's part of the receiving skill. Once a man does something for you, when he opens the door for you, when he invests into the relationship, when he's solving problems for you, when he's wanting to be there for you, protecting you, um, nurturing you, helping the relationship to thrive, uh, providing whatever that might be, that you appreciate him for those things. And you say, thank you. Not that you feel like you have to do something now for him, but you just receive appreciation. Thank you. Um, you're my hero. I value it. Um, you're so amazing. Um, you're so, you're so talented. You're so strong. You're so generous. Those kind of statements, they lift his sense of masculine ego, makes him feel great about himself and makes him want to do more of that for you. And people tend to actually like you more when they invest into you rather than you investing into them. It's a paradox. Benjamin Franklin actually talked about this in his book, um, uh, his autobiography about how he noticed this about people that when, when he asked them to do things for him and they did it, they tend to like him more than when he did things for them because now they felt indebted to him. So there's a psychological dynamic going on with that as well. And this is one of the things my wife did early on when we were dating that I really appreciated was when she appreciated me and she appreciated me being when I took the lead and when I was more masculine and she liked those things about me and she would let me know. And I, I liked hearing that from her and because it made me want to do it more. So that's a super powerful um, uh, principle and habit for you to cultivate as well. Now, if you thought this was valuable, then next you need to watch our video on the five signs that he is emotionally committed to you. The five signs to look out for that he is emotionally committed to you by clicking the video on the image to my right and watch that now. Enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.